Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. So now, we're going to talk to Joe Karp, who is calling in from up in North Palm Beach. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Anita. How are you today? Oh, I'm okay. The weather's beautiful, right? Uh, well, yes, it is. And, no uh, complaints. And, and are you beautiful? Are you in your pajamas? Uh, no, I'm actually, strangely <laughs> enough, not only am I not in my pajamas, but I am dressed with my uh, suit pants on, my shirt, my tie. <gasps> Where are you going? Uh, well, I'm actually going to the office this morning uh-huh. with the other, with some of the other attorneys because we are we've hired a video company to shoot brief videos of us to put on our website discussing different elements. So they'll be maybe two two and a half minutes long. So we'll talk a little bit about probate, Medicaid. So we're we're shooting we're shooting today. So I had to. Uh, Dress up for videos. So I'm going after I get off the phone with you. I'm going to go into the office and re-review the topics I'm going to be discussing, so I can be glib and uh, unscripted, which is the way I like to be. I know you I, do. <laughs> I, I want to I want to give a heads up to your listeners because we may discuss this this month's column in Boomer Times. I'm going to give your listeners a tip which may bring them money. So they better take out their pencil radio pencils. Okay. You do it too, Anita, because I've already looked you up. Okay? That's the okay. tip I'll give. All right. So I've got it. So that's that's just the tip as we go through it. Okay. So one of the things I want to tell people is we did our senior survival workshops, our seminars this past week. And at the time, we didn't have dates for May yet because we couldn't get the hotels to coordinate with their own schedules. So we now have our dates, and in fact, we couldn't even get towards St. Lucie. So I want to give the listeners a chance to write it down. That's a separate issue because it's not in your your boomer times, uh, that we do have dates and uh Actually, the May seminars are going to be April 30th. I mean, it was hard to get dates. April 30th, we're doing Palm Beach Gardens. We'll be at the Marriott in Palm Beach Gardens at Tuesday, April 30th, and we start at 1.30. And Wednesday, May 1st, we'll be at the Boynton Beach Courtyard by Marriott, which is on Congress Avenue between Gateway and Boynton Beach Boulevard. We'll be doing that Wednesday, May one. At 1.30. So for the people who say, oh, I missed your last workshop, or when's your next, and they look in Boomer Times, it ain't going to be there. And it's not going to be in that. And by the time the May one comes out, it would be moved to publish it. Okay. So just want to give a heads up on that. All right. So one of the things I, I wrote in this month's column, talked about people who have trust. And people who have trusts always think, well, if I have a trust, I don't need a will. Right? Isn't that the common (laughs) understanding? And and what people don't understand is sometimes they miss an asset. So their trust says, this is what will happen. This is who's in charge. This is who gets it. This is what I want. And as everybody knows, it's not always even. It's not always uh, everybody's getting something. It's not, and it defines who's in charge. But suppose you fo- forgot an asset. Suppose you forgot about an asset. Yeah. Well, and it's not beneficiary designated, and it's not co-owned, or you had an own uh, an account that was beneficiary as named, but it was your life insurance and you named your spouse, and your spouse predeceased you. Then there's nobody to get it, right? Yep. Because it doesn't say who's getting it if your spouse predeceases you. Let's assume you didn't put in contingent beneficiaries. Well, that asset will go through probate. And when that asset goes through probate, if you don't have a will, the legislature has set up the laws as to who will get your asset, and the judge gets to decide who's in charge of the estate, not you. Because it's got to get to somebody and you don't have a will, right? Yep. 
And the only way that asset's going to get anywhere is through the courts. The banks aren't going to say, or the insurance companies say, well, I understand you have a trust, we'll cut you a check. Uh Uh-uh. They want to make sure that the rules are followed and they're not getting in trouble. So what, what happens is there's probate. Now, if you have a trust, what you need is a document called a pour-over will. That will says, effectively, if I die with an asset that has to go through probate, my trust is the beneficiary. Mm. It also says who will be in charge of the probate to hand the assets over to the trustee. Usually it's the same person. Usually, not always. There are some people who cannot serve as personal representative that can serve as trustee. And then it'll get disposed of under the terms of your trust. So here's the magic issue. I bet every one of your listeners says, I know every damn asset I have. I know every penny I'm entitled to, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, you know that, right? Yes. Okay. Here's the answer. There's a website for Florida, and every other state has their own, called for unclaimed funds, money that has not been claimed, that has been turned over to the state because they have been abandoned over a period of time. Okay? Everybody right. writing this down? Yeah. And this is what you should write down. Okay. In Florida, the website is FL for Florida. Treasurehunt.gov. FL Treasurehunt.gov. Okay. That down, I'll give it to you again. How many dollars do you think is sitting in that website of unclaimed funds that the, the state financial officer is holding on to for people who have not claimed it? This is just Florida. I'm sure millions. Is it more than millions? Over $1 billion. No kidding. Over $1 billion. Anita? Yeah? Look up your name and you will be surprised. I have to tell you that I already, you may have already told me this because years ago we did find some things. Not a lot of money, $70 here, but something else there. Yes, and uh, my son found something. Yes, we did do that. Thank you. Well, guess what? You got to do it again. Oh, really? Why would I want to do it again? Because I saw your name. No kidding. Okay. No kidding. And I'm telling that to all because your listeners know how on top of you that you are, right? Yeah. I found my name with stuff, an insurance company that sent me a refund that I never saw. No kidding. I okay. Thank you. So, and, and I'm telling every one of your listeners, now that they hear, and, and then I'll tell you what to do. I'm going to tell their listeners the website again because now I got their attention. Oh, definitely. There's over a billion dollars out there. For people who have not found their money, and, and by the way, I'll give you the more of the tip. It's FL, which just stands for Florida, treasurehunt.gov. That's the website. And here's the other thing you should do. You're an ex-New Yorker? Find New York's website for unclaimed funds. After you retired and left New York, you moved to New Jersey by the Jersey Shore for two years. Look up New Jersey wow. under their unclaimed funds. And you'll Google it and it'll say New Jersey unclaimed funds and it'll tell you where that website is. You lived in Arizona for three years? Look it up. Now, many of your listeners are not sophisticated with computers or don't want to bother. Get your granddaughter to do it and tell her she can have 50% of everything she recovers <laughs> oh, for you. Or she can have it all. I mean, some of it's bupkis, it's $7.18, but some of it is $70,000. Joe, how some long it is it, it, Joe, how long can it stay there? I mean, let's say. I, I'm, I'm not sure of the duration that they keep it, and it varies from state to state, but it's a significant period of time. So, and the money is turned over to the state because they've got to be in charge. And they have information. So if you were to look up <coughs> Joseph Carp, there might be 
a bunch of listings for Joseph's cart, cart because that's not a unique name. I may be a unique person, but it's not a unique name. Okay. So it'll say uh, 22 li- list, Vista Lista thing, Saratoga, uh, Sarasota, Florida. Well, I know I never lived there. I know I never had an office there. It wasn't me. There's another Joseph Carp. So it will have other addresses where you can identify whether it's you or not as you look through the list. And uh, that's great. Boy, this is a great show this morning. You're going to so make I, some millionaires, apparently. You, who well, knows, right? So you never know. So the reason it, it occurred to me last night, I was getting ready. People don't know I actually do get ready for this radio show. And, and the way I get ready primarily is I make sure I read my column for Boomer Times for this month. Right. So when you say, hey, that was an interesting column you wrote. I know which darn column because I usually write <laughs> okay. it two months in advance or right. not. So I read it and I said, hmm, people are going to think this is baloney. I'm going to tell them where to go. And I went onto the computer. I didn't remember the website's name. And I went on and I hit unclaimed funds Florida. And then it said, go to here, click there and click there. And it said, click here. And all of a sudden it said, fltreasurehunt.com. Okay, so now I have another uh, yeah. question. Let's say you get on, you have your name, then what do you have to do to be able to get that money? They have a whole bunch of steps, and I didn't go through it, as to show who you were and how, you are, who, how you're entitled to. Uh, you will find something interesting when you look at yours. Okay. Because it has, sometimes they have multiple names. So sometimes it's uh, an account that was somebody else's, that you're the beneficiary of with somebody else. Ah. So there's all sorts of ways where sometimes, so it's, you didn't even think you had it, but Yield Bank had a bank account that was mom or dad's payable on death to the kids. Well, you look it up and all of a sudden it's the kids Ah. that are there. And you didn't know it was yours because when you're, Parent, and I'm talking to our New Yorkers. When your parents, when you left, uh, your parents left New York, or when they they passed away, they had a an account that Greenpoint Savings or Richmond Hill Savings or the Dime Savings Bank, and they named you and your sister as the beneficiary. Mm-hmm. Well, they passed away. The bank abandoned it, and they'll give other information. So it, there's a couple of steps on it. It's, it's a pain in the butt, and you know, uh, the answer is what you had said before. Sometimes you look at it and you just say, the hell with this. I'm not chasing $7.19 right. to do the paper trail to prove that's me. It ain't worth it. I can tell you this. Your 11-year-old granddaughter would do it. Okay. No, your you're right. I, year old granddaughter yeah, I think would do that it. would be a great thing for them to do, as a matter of fact, because that would be fun. They'd learn. That's not a bad idea. So, this, so that's a... Oh, yeah. Is that going to be your next your, column? Your, your, I, I don't know. I just uh, I have. I to think you Debbie should do it. it. I think it would go crazy. Okay. So the answer is, uh, you know, yours better be decent to divide it in thirds. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but but still, it's it's an adventure. Yeah, it it's is an adventure. Okay. And, and Thank you. Now you're you're a Floridian, Floridian. Yeah. But a lot of your listeners, in fact, not a lot. I would bet a dis disproportionate amount Florida is not their native state so they may have access to money that's there in unclaimed funds in Illinois New Jersey you never know so then the hunt begins so you put your teenage granddaughter or grandson on the hunt say here's all the places I lived here's your here's my parents <laughs> name Love here's, it. here's my uh Whatever name, and we you do it. I mean, we do it when we handle an estate. We we check on claim funds, Florida, as well as we do a credit check. By the way, when somebody dies, if they have creditors, they've got to be paid off. Whether it's through a trust or a will, whatever, it's they got to be paid off. So what we do is, uh, and if you're in charge of the estate and you're doling out the money because. Somebody died, and you're in charge of their trust or estate, and you dole out the money. Well, creditors have a right to 
file a claim up to two years after your ah, date of death. Ah, and see. you say, I I don't know if there are any outstanding debts that my brother, sister, mother, father had. I don't know if they sure. screwed up a credit card, right? Right. I don't know if, and by the way, I'll give you the, the tricky one. I don't know if my mother signed a guarantee on my niece's car loan. <laughs> right? Right? You don't know that. Oh, my And my goodness. niece is pretty irresponsible. And I'm worried that, you know, if I give out that money, you may not be worried. But if you give out the money to everybody and all of a sudden that credit card company comes after you or the uh, the, the the car loan people say, uh, write a letter, dear grandma, uh, your <laughs> granddaughter didn't pay on her student on her uh, – on her car loan, and now you owe because you were a guarantor, mm -hmm. and you get the mail and you say, "Holy crow! I gave the money out to everybody, right?" Yes. Now call them up and ask for money back. You watch how well that goes over. <laughs> They'll say, "Well, go after, go after the granddaughter who owes the money. I'm not giving you anything back. You, sh you know, it's gone, baby." So one of the things we do with every estate is we do a total credit check. We we have a contract with one of the, the major credit companies, and for that purpose, we do a credit check of our deceased client to make sure the fiduciary doesn't get in trouble mm -hmm. because you just never know. And by the way, the grandma signing car loans is not as uncommon as you think. You know, so so it, wait, and they don't even consider it a debt. Okay, so I have some questions now. If this sits in this pot and no one claims it, the state then eventually just takes it. Eventually, it is escheats to the state. Mm -hmm. That's when that money goes to the state. It doesn't sit there eternally, and then it goes to the state. And I, then, and how I, does the state, though, even to begin with this? How, do, how are they notified? Is this company the notifies them? The financial institutions have a legal obligation oh, to I do see. that because they've got it. Now, there's probably stuff that – and because I don't know all the mechanisms. There's probably stuff they don't know. So, for example, if there's a life insurance policy on Billy Bob's life, okay, and it has – it's a – Paid in full policy, and it names Mrs. Billy Bob as the beneficiary. And even Miss, and then it says the contingent beneficiaries are their kids. Okay? And the kids have no idea, right? Now, Billy Bob and Mrs. Billy Bob would be 111 right now if they were still alive. Okay. Does the insurance company know they're dead? They don't know. So there's rules even for insurance companies because there comes a time, I assume, that they got to turn over the money. I don't know what the presumptive age is or the lack of contact, but you all know. And for those of you who are listening, you remember there used to be a guy who showed up door to door at your parents' home in a walk up apartment. When you were a little kid and your mother had an insurance policy or your father did and it was some sort of endowment plan and the guy would come up, schlep up five flights of stairs to get his 29 cent weekly premium or his dollar twelve monthly premium and have him sign a receipt and he'd leave with that insurance policy. Your mother had the policy. Nobody thought anything of it because the death benefit may have been $500. It got lost in space. When mom died, you took a look at all of her papers and said she doesn't have garbage. She has no money. She doesn't have, hasn't filed a tax return in years. Let's just throw out this crap. I'm not going to spend four days going through all of the stuff I swore I told my mother to throw, throw away, right? <laughs> right? You're, you're on a roll this morning, Joe. You know that. But isn't that, that's the real world. Right. So you threw all the crap in the garbage. Well, some of that crap had me really hidden in it. Mm, in fact, right. some of that crap had money in it, and it's funny, when I'm named, uh, for some people, and this is not a, a request, for some people I become the, they don't have an appropriate person to handle their affairs, and I become the personal representative or the trustee when they die. I had a client who died about a year ago, 
And she was a hoarder. And when it came time, and I was the personal representative, when it came time to get rid of the stuff and go through it, I had to, ha- I had a moving company come in. Her furniture was going to charities, but she had more paper than you can ever imagine. I mean, I took pictures of it so that the beneficiaries knew I wasn't playing games with the amount of time I spent. She had rooms that, looked like she had never taken paper out of it in years. I'm not kidding. I had movers come because I wanted to sell the house, which we did, and box up all of the paper. And my son, Jonathan, who's an attorney, was there supervising and watching. Box up all the bags, garbage bags and Publix bags and stuff with paper, not mentioning file cabinets of crap. And I went through it. And in all of that paper, I found five checks that she had never deposited that she had received that I could write back and get the money. Oh, I, my. Found a, I found a life insurance policy with a death benefit huh. mixed in in all the crap. Huh. And that's because when I'm hired, I've got a real life duty. I can't ignore that responsibility. I can't say, this is mom's crap. I don't give a damn. It's not worth the time. Right? I right. can't. I When it's... If it was my mother who passed away, we could say, geez, she always saved so much paper. So let's just get rid of this. Right. Uh, but when it's somebody else's, I've got a fiduciary duty to make sure I'm not getting rid of something that's valuable. And unfortunately, that means, by the way, I could spend a lot of time finding nothing, and it's going to cost the estate money. So, but I have to do it. So that's my second warning. Go through your crap papers, everybody, and throw out the stuff you don't need. Right. Don't save. Nobody needs to see your – I went through an estate that the people saved every tax return since 1947 when they got married. (laughs) Okay. And these were not sophisticated investors that were keeping track of their capital gains and stuff like that. They just saved it. And by the way, their tax returns when they first started out was two pages. When they the second one died, each tax return was about seven inches thick. Know why? No, why? They had every CVS pharmacy bag stapled to the return as proof of the medical deductions. Oh, my Every bag was saved. I mean, they were they were organized. They were terrific. They were less difficult than the lady with the bags in the garbage. Now, people should, number one, not throw away at least five years of all financial records, including any accounts opened or closed, in case they ever need Medicaid. That's important. They should be saved. Even if you haven't filed a tax return, Medicaid is entitled to see your last five years of financial assets, what you did with your money. So save those bank accounts and save those brokerage account statements. And if the CD rolls over, don't throw out the old CD. Save the new one. Save the new one and save the old and track those. But keep them organized. Have the little file that says BB&T Bank, Chase Bank, CDs and just keep the trail. Mm -hmm. Uh, If if you have something that you bought that you want to save the track record so when you sell there's no capital gains, save that or the capital gains is disclosed, save that paperwork. But you don't need every darn phone bill you've paid in the last 22 years stuck in a basket of stuff. Right, that's true, but you're right that People just and it. all it does is become burdensome for your family when you become disabled or die, and they make a practical decision. And sometimes that decision is, we can't sell this house for a damn year because we got to go through all of this crap. That's right. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna box it up and send it to uh, Massapequa to my house in, in Long Island so I can look at what Mom's paperwork says. Yep, you're right. Now, what I did is. I was not going back and forth to their house. I wanted to sell the lady's house when she died. I didn't want, because to me, that was a liability. And by the way, it is a liability to your children as well. It's a liability to them. They don't want to 
hold on. They don't want to have to hold on to the house through hurricane season. They don't want to pay for it. By the way, a house that is empty, homeowner's insurance goes way up. Hmm. You say, well, I'll tell my kids not to tell them I died. <laughs> and, That's and funny. then when they go to oh my they God. have a claim, when they have a claim, they'll be denied coverage because they didn't tell them about that. Oh. <laughs> and you think, well, why do they charge more when it's empty? They know if you're a snowbird that you're not there in the summer and stuff like that. They know that's disclosed, that's clear, you're alive, it's still your house, you have the responsibility. But if your kids are in New Jersey and that house is closed and then there's a leak, yep. when's that leak going to be discovered? Not like it is when you're there. That leak will be discovered in eight months when the walls are black from the mildew and mold. The floors are buckling. The you know so they they charge more for that. So you want to get rid of it. You want to do things to make it easier for people. So now I've told you how to get more money for yourself if you do it right, now, right? And and also how to clean up some stuff. So I have to ask you a question. So uh, since you handled our estate and you said you looked up everything. Why would I want to go? Does the other things can it pop well, up? Cause, no, because I didn't hand. I don't look up when you're alive. Oh, if you're coming oh, into right. your estate plan for me. Right. I don't do the work to find out what you have. I see. Yeah. I presume you know what you have. I see. You don't want to hire me by the hour to figure out what you got mm -hmm. because you got what you got. You tell right. me how it's titled. I rely upon your representations. Okay, I have to because otherwise, where do I start digging about you? I don't look up your creditors because you're not dead. You should take care of your own bills. You don't need to pay a lawyer to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you're managing your best friend's estate when she dies, you want to make sure if you give her kids or her, her whomever her money, you want to make sure that you don't get hit by the creditor who says, why didn't you pay us? She stiffed us on a bill. And she may not have knowingly stiffed. She just forgot. Or you want to know whether there's money there. Did I lose you? No, you didn't. I want to ask you a question okay. then. Do, uh, does when you get your, when you're having your, um, your, I'm sorry, let me just rephrase this. Is this a course that people take when they're, uh, when they're becoming a lawyer? Is this knowledge? No, no. this is. Practical experience. Mm. This is lawyers know what they're supposed to do. I'm the only lawyer I know who has a, a contract with one of the countries companies to check credits. I'm the only lawyer I know who does that. Oh. I don't trust my clients to really know. And it costs not a lot of money for us to go online and, and send to the company a double check that there's no debts. So, you know, one of the things people need to know is where you go is important. The law firm with experience and knowledge and focused and, in all candor, common sense, that that's who does that stuff. And I think it's a good time for me to... So thoroughly. Okay, let me give some information out to everybody. If you want to contact the CARP law firm, let me give you a toll-free number. It's 800 800 uh, so sorry, should I be doing the local one? I know you've kind of no, changed this. What do you want to do? Toll free. Well, we have three offices, but the the main local number that works for everybody is five six one six two five eleven hundred. Everything calls into there. Whatever number, if you call Point Beach, you call Port St. Lucie. Everything's going to go to five six one six two five eleven hundred. And if you call one eight hundred eight nine three. 9911, which is our toll-free number, that's still going to call into the Payne Palm Beach Gardens office where our main staff is. So should we change in your advertising? No, because some people just still are old school. You know, oh. the, we kept that number, the toll-free, because we okay. gave it to people when, if you called out of the area, there was a, a toll. I see. So I had to keep the number, and we go through that debate all the time. Okay. Well, Joe, this was a great show, I have to tell you, and I can't wait to get on my computer and look everything up. So everybody, 
Please thank Joe. Go to fltreasurehunt.gov and see how much money you might be sitting on. May 1 in Boynton Beach, April 30th in Palm Beach Garden. You Thanks, well, Joe. Everybody. Have thank a happy you. Easter and a happy Passover. You too, kiddo. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.